Welcome everyone to our channel and that is Double Click Academy for Ultimate Online Lessons. Today, we shall be basically interested in looking at that is entering inventory in QuickBooks. But before we do that, please make sure that we always click and subscribe to our channel so that you'll be in position to receive every kind of update you need. That is, any the question you want, please comment so that we shall get it there. So we are proceeding with the company that we created previously, that is Double Click Academy. In case you didn't watch that tutorial, please go back to our channel and watch the cam. I mean the tutorial on creating a company so that you'll be at this par. But if we proceed and we assume that everyone is at par, please, we can proceed. And how do we create, I mean, how do we enter inventory in our QuickBooks company? Inventory basically we find our inventory from list. We shall always be going to list. And from list, we shall click on the list and we shall have a list of items there beginning from chart of accounts, accounts, item list, fixed asset item, all those ones. But our interest for today is basically on item list. When you click on lists, we come to item list. From item list, we click on item list, we shall be given this kind of dialog box, that is item list box. And from here, we shall come basically to item. Item is down here on the bottom left. You'll always find items. From there, we shall click on the item. From clicking item, we shall now come to new. We shall click on new. And from new, you'll see that we shall be given this other dialog box again for ourselves to choose. From here, we have services. If your business deals in services, please make sure that you click on services. If your business deals in inventory parts, make sure you click on inventory parts. If it's inventory assembly, all of them have their own meaning. Services means these are things that are intangible in the business. For example, if you're dealing in a hospital and you basically have a, a consultation fees, all those ones, those are services. But if you have items that are tangible, that is inventory parts. For example, if you're dealing in a business of uh, selling uh, maybe hardware shops, all those ones you shall come to inventory part. Inventory assembly, those are now things that make you to assemble something that you can use for selling or for resale, that is that on that. And then so forth and so on. We have so many of them. But our interest for this, we are going to basically look at an example of uh, maybe a hardware. So it means we shall have tangible products or products for this case. We shall click on inventory parts. After clicking on inventory pass, it will give us this kind of uh, statement whereby from here we have inventory parts here, then from here we have item name, item name, stock number. Sometimes you realize some of the items have numbers, we shall put there the number or item, item name. Now for this case, assuming we are dealing in cement, maybe the item is cement. So here we shall put cement, we shall type here cement. Then here we shall now come to unit of measure. Unit of measure in cement, how many, I mean, how do you measure your cement? You, you measure it in bags, you measure it in any other way of measurement. But of course, we know that cement is always measured in terms of bags. So our unit of measure is always bags. So we shall click on this drop down here. Then from this drop down, we have some options of each, and that is if you've already entered each. But if they are, they are not entered anything, it means we shall only get there, add new. So we shall now click on add new. From add new, it gives us this dialog box as well. That is select a unit of measure type that you want. If you don't see the unit of measure type you need, select other to create a new, a new one. So for this case, we know that we are interested in bags and cement is measured in bags. And... When you come, when you look at this, you realize there we also have options like pound, length, weight, volume, and so on. So you realize bags are counted. We count bags. We don't see it as length. We don't see it as weight. We know what the length is. Weight, we know what it is. If you are talking about kilograms, you come to this. If you're talking about, uh, I mean, maybe the kilometers, food examples are given here, you come to length. But for this case, we are interested in bags, and bags are under count. So we shall click on count. Then we go to next. We shall click on next. Now from here, select a unit of measure. From here, we have each pair, dozen, and we don't have bags here. So we shall now come to other for this case. Then after clicking on other, we shall come and click on next. 
from clicking next, you will now give us that what is that other unit of measure you want to type in. So for this case, we want to type in that is bug. So we shall first put the bug as the name. Then we give any other abbreviation representing bugs. So we type here bug. That is bug. Then here we count now to put the abbreviation of bug. We can maybe say it's BG. BG representing bugs. Then after that, we finish it. So you now realize that the unit of measure as bugs has been added into our system. Then from manufacturer's parts number, we don't have that. We can leave it as the way it is. Then now we shall also come. One of the instrumental parts that you're supposed to fill in is the cost. Say for example, now the uh, bag of cement, the cost is uh, assuming you're a hardware dealer and you're buying it at Satawan Southern. So here we shall put the cost that is Satawan Southern. So here we shall put Satawan Southern. That is the cost. Then what is the selling price? Now, assuming the selling price we always sell in our hardware shop is 32 or 32 500, whichever amount that you use for selling, we shall put it here. Now, assuming it's 32, we shall put here 32,000. So that is the selling price. Now, on the cost of goods sold, we don't have anything here. The taxes, assuming this item is taxable, we shall now come maintain the tax from under tax code but if the item is not taxable we shall click on that and then we say non-taxable so that is how we treat items that are taxable and those ones that are non-taxable then now we shall come to preferred vendor assuming there was a vendor that was meant i mean that is that you have hired to be supplying you with this kind of uh, uh, cement product you will now come to the preferred vendor and then you select the vendor that supplies you with cement. Assuming it's Godiv Godivina, all these names we already entered in the our previous uh, tutorials, so you can watch the previous tutorials so that you'll be at par. So assuming it's Godiva, we shall click on Godiva here. So Godiva now becomes the preferred vendor. Then we come to income account. Under income account, we shall now click on the, uh, uh, we shall now know that we know that this is under sales. So our items are under sales. So we shall now come into income account. And then we click on this. Assuming the sales is not there, for my case, sales are there. If they are not there, we shall now come and we add new for sales. If it's not there. So it will make you, it, mean it will take you back like you're creating the chart of accounts, which you already have the tutorial. You can go and watch that tutorial on how to add a new chart of account and your sales will be there. But for this case, our sales are there. So we can just type sales and it will bring the sales that we have. We are interested in sales, not sales discount or whatever. We are interested in the sales. So that is that. Then now we shall come down to asset account. We don't have anything to put here. Reorder point. Assuming your set, I mean, you have your reorder points that whenever it reaches a certain limit, there should be another request of cement. And you can put it there that if it reaches maybe 500 bags of cement, another bunch of orders should be made. That is now the reorder point for this case. So we have the minimum and the maximum. Whenever the minimum is when it reaches that, it means you have to order for more. Then the maximum, when it reaches, it means you don't order for any other thing. Then now you come to on hand. On hand, assuming in our store, what we have cement, we have 1,000 bags of cement. So we shall put on hand. Sometimes in your, they call it on hand. Sometimes they call it balance, balance of stock or inventory. It's all the same thing. So that is the on hand we have. What we have in our in our store that is the on hand then now the total it computes itself how does it compute the total it means on hand times the cost that's why we have 31 million here as our total value so it means in your store you have the total value of 31 million that is in money form or in cash form that i mean in in in, in the amount you have 31 the, the 1000 Bags of cement means it costed you 31,000 for you to spend to bring it up to that level. Then as of, we can now, for this case, 
This is, we remember, sometimes it is uh, out of closing stock. If it's a closing stock, you put here the, 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 the closing date here. If it's the, any other, I mean, you purchase it on any other day, you set the date here as of, you put that date there. Now, assuming for this case, we are looking at maybe 2021, and uh, that is uh, the closing stock. So, assuming the closing stock was as at maybe December 2021, 31st. So, you, put, you place it there, and that is that you have it there. So, that is that basically how we enter these items or balances of items or inventory or stock, whatever you want to call it. That is how we enter it, and we can now set it in this form. So, you realize we have entered our cement balance here or stock of cement we have entered it and what you also have to note from here is that there is a markup a markup percentage there then we also have the margin percentage there so all these ones it sets itself and it comes from the cost and the selling price you'll be in position to know that the markup price is always 3.23 percent so that is the profit margin you always get from this. It has already computed. Sometimes you might only be in knowing only the cost and you don't know the selling price. So we shall also look at how, how we set the markup when the selling price is not given. That All that is always in the position for you to, to, to arrive at your, your selling price if the markup is given. So after that, we shall just come straight away to OK it. So you realize it will bring that this transaction is more than 90 days in the past. Here there is no problem. You can just click yes and it remains that transaction has already been entered. So the transaction has, when you click OK, the transaction means all of this warning and OK, we said yes. And the transaction has already been entered. So assuming we also have another one, maybe you, other than cement, we're also selling, maybe we can say timber. So assuming now it's timber, we shall still come to the same thing, come to list, from list come to item list, just the very way we did it, item, from item come to new, from new, we know it's still under inventory part, then from there we now name it as, we are saying timber. So timber, timber is measured in which unit? So at timber, we can measure it either in pieces or in each, whatever we want to measure it. So maybe for this case, we can call it pieces. So we go to add a new, and we know pieces are also counted. And then we go to the next. We know pieces is not here. Then we come to other. We go to next. Then we call it pieces. Pieces, and we can maybe abbreviate it as CS pieces. Assuming that is the abbreviation, then we finish it. So it means it's now already here. Then assuming the, the cost price, we always buy this at 6,500 and then we sell it at always maybe 8,000. 8,000. So like I was trying to explain to you about the markup and the margins from here, the markup after you've entered 6,500 it goes to negative, but after you've entered the selling price and you come and click anywhere, the markup now changes to that. It means it's computed from the selling price and the cost price. So from here, we now select the preferred vendor if it's there. Sometimes the preferred vendor is not given or it's not known or it's anyone else. So it means under the preferred vendor, we leave it open if it's not meant for a specific supplier. We leave it the way it is. But if it's for a specific supplier, we now select that supplier. Now, then we come and look for our sales under our income account sales. Then on the hand, assuming we have 2,400 pieces, pieces of timber, and then the total is given, then the, the still the, we also have the date. If it's a closing date, we put the closing date. If it's any other day within the the accounting period, we set it the way it is. So that is that about that. Then after that, we okay it. 
it's the same thing and then we say yes this yes keeps on disturbing and that is yes so how do we know that we have already entered it still we can now look at it from still item list we can maximize this so here now you realize we have our cement here with the total of uh, 1000 bags and then uh, we have timber timber with the total of 2400 pieces of uh, of timber so that is how we basically enter our inventory into our quickbooks or our company so that is that basically on it and it's simple that is how we do it that is how you enter inventory into your company and now with that you'll be in position to continue with your business because you already have the inventory so it means you can now go ahead to sell the cement and the timber or whichever kind of item you have already entered here you are now in position to transact it from here so with that i would like to thank everyone who has been tuned on to this tutorial and please make sure that you subscribe and subscribe and in case of any comment please go down deep into our uh this video and then you comment in case you need anything to be clarified please make it clear in your comment section so that we shall be in position to respond to your comment or your request so thank you so much to, for listening for this and please make sure you are really empowered on this quickbooks tutorial